You all see the sign? It says no smoking. No smoking. Watch. No smoking. No smoking. Let's dissect this. This is called syntactic ambiguity. Syntactic ambiguity means when there's ambiguity of a sentence within the particular context. Now let me break this down for you guys. If you guys are not familiar with the term ambiguity. Ambiguity means indecisiveness. It means when something has one or two interpretations or possible more interpretations, right? So isn't it, it kind of, it's kind of ironic you know, that the word ambiguous itself is an ambiguous word semantically in its semantical meaning. Now here within this particular, now syntax, syntax, syntactic actually means, you know, if you're familiar with, it, with, with the, the field of linguistics, you have phon, phon, phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Phonology deals with how sound is produced. No, what am I saying? Phonetics! Shit you're saying. Phonetics deals with how sound is produced. Phonology deals with sound. Tonal structure, tonality, consonants, dissonance. It really takes a theoretical approach to explain tonal structure. Like, like there's so many ways to say no. You could say the condescending no, the sarcastic no. Like the no, condescending no, the sarcastic oh no. Then you have the conceited no, the narcissistic no, the pessimistic no, the optimistic no, um, the aggressive no, the antagonizing no. The, there's multiple no's. And what determines which one of these no's has its contextual meaning is specifically dependent on its phono phonological tonal structure, its phonological Cadence. So you have phonetics, you have phonology, and you have morphology. Basically, morphology takes words and breaks it down into syllables and dissects it from a, from a, from a morphological perspective. It breaks it down and explain it. And it even takes subsets of phonology to explain tonal structure, right? So you see how they're all interrelated? So, I, so you have phonetics, phonology, morphology. Then you have syntax. Syntax deals with context. Like the word watch. You have a watch on your hands and you have watch, watch as a noun and then you have watch as looking at someone, right? So the word watch itself is ambiguous, it's an ambiguous word. Although ambiguity is ambigu amb ambiguous in nature, the word watch itself is an ambiguous word because in one hand, watch means watch on your hands, a physical watch and noun. And then on the other hand, watch also means an adverb, not an adverb. A verb, what should you say? Verb, verb as an action word, right? Because you watch, right? Now syntactically, right? Once the, the word watch is used within the right syntactical context, all the ambiguity is, is eradicated and it no longer has any semantical meaning outside the parameters of its syntactical meaning. Right? So you have phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax. That's syntax. Syntax deals with things within particular context. We're going to get back to this. Then we have semantics. Semantics basically deals with meaning. If you look at a word from a lexical perspective, lexical means a word, one, right? One word. If you look at things from a lexical perspective, right? Ambiguity is prevalence, prevalent, right? It's very pervasive in the field of language and linguistics, right? Then you have pragmatics. Pragmatic is basically the approach to how language is used as a society. Then you have sociolinguistics, which deal with how society... How society deals and interpret language, and you have psycholinguistics, then you have cognitive linguistic, new ling um, neurological linguistic, and how the mind interpret language. Not to strain to all these different fields. So syntactic means sentence. You have phonetics, phon ph phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. We deal with this from a sy 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 um, syntactical perspective. No smoking within a sy syntactical meaning. It means it is trying to tell us no smoking. No. We as a society, now if this is from a sociolinguistic perspective, as a society, we interpret this as no smoking means don't smoke, right? But the, um, the, syntactic, the syntactical ambiguity of the sentence means that it is, syntax means with a sentence again, with context and ambiguity means multiple interpretation. If you look at this syntactically, it also means that nobody is smoking here. It also means that, but there's something in semantics called denotation. You have connotation and denotation. The denotational aspect of semantics expl explores the fundamental meaning of a word. Despite its ambiguous nature and its ambiguity. And then you have the connotative aspect of, of our semantics. We deal with how, how a word has evolved and how things have been interpreted over time. Just like you have metaphor, metaphors and you have um, idioms. Metaphors and idioms are kind of primarily the slimino, but they are mutually exclusive within a particular time frame. An idiom is basically a, a metaphorical, syntactical sentence that has evolved and ingrained and embedded itself into society and it has become uh, uh, 
uh, uh, an acceptable figurative way of speaking. Like you say, break a leg is a is an idiom. We all know what it means. But but the idiom is is it is a metaphor, but an evolved um, kind of metaphor because it become part it become ingrained in society. When you look at this, this is syntactic ambiguity. This have more than one interpretations, right? From a de denotational perspective, it kind of means. No one should smoke here because from, 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 from a society, societal perspective, we interpret this as no one should smoke here, right? But it also has connotative interpretations also, which means to state that this could mean no one is smoking here. So I could light up a blood clot weed and start smoking my bumper clot weed and you can't tell me no blood clot. <laughs>